Hey everyone, today we're in Woodward, Oklahoma at the Elmwood Cemetery and we are going to discuss an important western figure that you may not have ever heard of, but in his time he was extremely famous. This is the person that we're here to see today, Temple Houston. That name may not ring a bell, but after I discuss a little bit, it probably will a little bit, at least that last name, Houston. Temple was the last born child of Sam Houston. Now, if you don't know who Sam Houston was, he was an important figure in the Texas history. He uh, was a, a soldier that was important with the Battle of San Jacinto. Um, he became the first president of the Republic of Texas. Texas was actually a country all of its own. He was also the governor of Texas. Now, you can have a whole other video on Sam, but here we're discussing Temple. Now, Temple was born when Sam was 67 years old. And uh, three years later, Sam died of pneumonia. So that left Temple without a father. And uh, there were eight children. Temple was the youngest of eight children. And Temple was actually the first child that was born in the governor's mansion in the state of Texas. But anyways, he had no father, and he was left there with his mother. Now, his mother uh, helped out uh, taking care of people with yellow fever and stuff like that. Now, she contracted yellow fever when he was seven years old. And the same day that she contracted it, uh, she passed away from it. Basically, she was fine in the morning. And then that night, she died from it, just completely came down with it. They buried her immediately that night. And at this point, he had no parents at all. He was left to be cared for by his sisters, which uh, he really didn't like that too much. So around the time when he was uh, 12 to 13, he left home and started working cattle drives. And uh, from there, he went to work on a riverboat in Mississippi. He went all up and down the Mississippi River. And from there, he met a political friend of his father's who convinced him to uh, become a page in the U.S. Senate, which he did do that. So he uh, made his way from New Orleans to Washington, D.C., where he became a page for about three years. And the whole time, his sisters and family were trying to convince him to come back home to Texas. And at age 17, he decided to do that. Now, he returned home, and he went to college in what is now Texas A&M. It was a brand new college then. And uh, he was among the first students there. There was kind of a change in staff, and... Uh, he didn't agree with them, didn't get along with them too well, so he then transferred to Baylor. And uh, that's where he majored in law and philosophy. Now, Temple was the type of guy that could pick up anything and read it and instantly know everything on there that he read. He was an avid student. He excelled exceedingly well. Um, he graduated with honors. He's the type of person that was heavily into religion and the Bible, so that was something that he uh, often used throughout his life. Um, after he graduated from Baylor, uh, he decided that he wanted to become a lawyer. Now, there was a problem with that. Uh, he graduated uh, with his degree extremely early. Like I said, he was 17 when he went back to college. He, he basically earned a four-year degree in nine months. That's how much of a smart uh, student he was. And uh, he was 19 when he graduated and wanted to uh, become a lawyer. But the problem was the Texas State Bar Association required you to be 21. They didn't know what to do with him. And uh, of course, everybody knew who his father was. They knew who he was. But they did make an agreement and an exception for him. Uh, what they did was they took a class average of the four people that were in his class for law school, and that equaled 21. So 
they allowed him to become a lawyer. Now he did exceedingly well as a lawyer and uh, in fact he was not only a great lawyer he was also a fantastic public speaker and uh, he dedicated a, a memorial to the Battle of San Jacinto. Now it's a small memorial there's a larger memorial there now but that small one is still down there and he he dedicated that memorial and had everyone in the audience move to tears over what he said um, it basically caught the eye of uh, the governor at the time who then decided to make him the district attorney for the whole panhandle of the state of texas and so he moved up there and at the time the panhandle was a rough territory um, full of cowboys, lawlessness, prostitutes, all kinds of things. Now he, he thrived very well in that sort of environment. Uh, Temple was the type of guy that wasn't afraid of adventures, much like his father. Uh, he was also a sharp shooter. In fact, Bat Masterson had a competition, a shooting competition there, and Temple won that co uh, shooting competition the losing opponent that he faced was actually Billy the Kid. But anyways, he, he exceeded in that area, he in, in the panhandle, and then he got on as a Texas senator, and he uh, was a criminal defense lawyer. But he, he went on and uh, had many successful cases. In fact... Um, it was unbelievable what he was able to do, but he did have one particular case that he lost, and he went all the way up trying to uh, appeal this, and it really got to him. He uh, was so bothered by it that he criticized the Texas justice system and decided to move out of the state. From there, he went to Woodward, Oklahoma, where we are now, and that's probably where his best um, trials happened as a lawyer. Also, just some of the Old West tales that he had. Um, now, everywhere he went in his life, he was always introduced as the son of Sam Houston. So even when he was in Texas, there were people that really wanted him to become a governor of Texas. And he, he spent his whole life trying to escape that sort of title that he was the son of Sam Houston. Now, he was proud of his father. He just didn't like being introduced as that. But he came to Oklahoma, and uh, here he uh, defended all sorts of criminals. In fact, one case that he had where there was a horse thief that he was asked to defend, and he decided to go in and see if he wanted to do it, he uh, spoke to the criminal in a little private room, and when they returned, they found him just kind of playing with his watch. Temple was playing with his watch. The window was open, and the criminal was gone. So there was all sorts of things that happened that were controversial with him. Um, another thing that happened in Enid, Oklahoma, is... Uh, he, now, Temple, since he was a criminal defense lawyer, he had a just kind of a crosshair marker, a target on him. And so a lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people tried to uh, fight him, assassinate him, stuff like that. So there's one case, uh, what he did was he would ride in the center of the street. And that was to prevent an ambush from happening on him. So one day when he was in Enid, he was riding and uh, he was carrying a big, thick, 13 plus hundred page uh, Oklahoma statute book and he was riding in the center of the street and someone tried to assassinate him and they shot at him and they hit that statute book and it, the bullet went about halfway through but it actually saved his life. And one other crazy thing that happened in Enid is he uh, was a defense lawyer for a murderer it was a cowboy murder, and uh, the jury was kind of uh, 
mixed up. I mean, it was kind of rigged. It was basically a bunch of friends of the person that got murdered. So it was kind of slanted. He didn't like that idea. But Temple was known for his theatrics in court. And I don't think there's probably ever been another uh, lawyer that has done anything even remotely close to what he's done. At least not uh, with the recognition that he's had. But basically in his defense, he was trying to say that this cowboy was not guilty because he was facing a gunfighter. The person that this cowboy killed was a gunfighter with a bad reputation. In fact, he was so quick with the pistol that you could try to draw it and you wouldn't have time because this guy would immediately shoot you before you could draw your pistol. So he said that his client was not guilty because he was simply trying to kill this guy before he got killed and he knew the reputation and everyone else did it as well. So to demonstrate this, Temple actually pulled out his own pistol and fired it at juror number one and then he fired it at juror number two and he just kept going. At this time, the courthouse was in complete pandemonium. People were trying to panic and exit the courtroom, stumbling over each other and, and just hurting each other. The judge ducked. He was up underneath uh, the bench and everything. And then when he came up out of there, because there was kind of a pause, he was waving the smoke that was in the courtroom from the pistol but he found Temple calmly reloading to try to go at it again. Now what happened in that is all of the jurors left the courtroom and uh, then they came back in and they found that cowboy guilty. But Temple uh, argued that this ju these jurors left and mingled with people outside and they weren't supposed to. So he wanted a retrial. And so he actually got a retrial because he was complying with the law. The judge was complying with the law and the jurors did actually leave. So a new trial was set and these were not friends of the cowboy. And then, uh, of course, the cowboy was acquitted. So he had all sorts of court cases that were controversial and extremely dramatic like that. There's a famous one here. Uh, in the Woodward area where he defends a prostitute. Now, Temple tried really hard to get rid of uh, areas of dispute here, you know, ladies of the night, but he did defend one and he did uh, help her out and she was found innocent. He convinced everyone in there that, you know, that they, they couldn't uh, convict her and he basically kind of used passages from the Bible and just like I said he he was very convincing very dramatic uh, but he made enemies everywhere he went in fact um, one case that he was involved with uh, the attorneys that opposed him were the Jennings brothers now I don't know if you know about the Jennings brothers they're probably some of the most unsuccessful uh, criminal gang members ever now they had their own gang where they robbed trains and stuff like that but they were also lawyers and so he uh, was in opposition to two of those Jennings gang members by the name of Ed and John Jennings and uh, like I said he made Temple made a lot of enemies and he actually found them in a bar later in which arguments ensued and Temple shot uh, his pistol and there's a lot of controversy as to what happened. Did Temple kill Ed or not? So some people say that he shot John in the shoulder which rendered John with a handicap with his arm for the rest of his life. Uh, but as John tried to draw that shot went off and hit Ed and killed him uh, the shot went off in Ed's head and killed him. Uh, but also there's the thought that Temple actually shot him in the head and then shot John. Uh, regardless, um, he, he, he uh, was acquitted of murder 
uh, he wasn't found guilty. I'm not sure if all the witnesses were even heard on that. It's like I said, it's really controversial. So um, it's interesting because not only were those two Jennings lawyers, but also uh, their father was a lawyer and a judge. And it wasn't long after that particular murder of Ed Jennings that the judge had spit in the face of Temple's son and immediately Temple found that judge in the very same bar as the Jennings boys, Ed and John. And so he pulled his pistol and shot that judge dead. The only words that were uh, muttered out of that judge were, I'm a dead man because he knew what was going to happen. And Temple had argued that it was either going to be him or me, and it was just going to happen. So for the second time, he faced murder charges. But what was interesting about this one was, he pled guilty to this murder. And the funny thing is, is he was only fined $300 for that. At this time, there was also another Jennings boy, a younger brother of Ed and John, and he vowed to kill Temple. The problem was is he had gotten in trouble with the law and was sentenced to prison. Like I said, they were all unsuccessful um, criminals, outlaws. They were not good at all. So he got sent to prison. And during that time, uh, that's when Temple passed away, passed away. In 1905, as you see there, Temple had a stroke and passed away. Now, Temple was a guy that they were actually kind of pushing to become uh, the first governor of the state of Oklahoma, but sadly he passed away uh, a couple years before statehood. But he's quite a figure in the Old West, and he was a crack shot with a pistol, and he thrived in rough environments. And uh, like I said, he's a big name, not only from his father, but he... Uh, set his own trail of fire everywhere he went and basically made his own name but his whole life even in his death he was recognized as the son of sam houston even though he paved his own way now this is his wife that's buried here right beside him and uh, it's just kind of a family plot here and this says uh baby houston now they also had another baby that passed away and that baby is in texas um, and i can't remember the name of the town but as you look here this is uh temple's son temple houston jr now i'm unsure which son it is that that judge spat in the face of and it makes me think that it could be this one. Um, but I'm not sure. And I just say that because he has the same name. But like I said, when he was a little kid, this is the one that, uh, you know, got, got spat on. Or at least one of these sons did. Um, but anyways, he's buried here as well. And then here you can see... Bessie, which is the wife of Dixie Houston, and uh, that's another son right here. And so that, that could also be the son. Now there's a newspaper article on that explaining how that judge spat in the face and how Temple shot that judge and everything, but it never mentions uh, the son's name. But anyways, if you are here in the Woodward area, Stop in here at the Elmwood Cemetery and pay your respect to a prominent lawyer, both in the state of Texas and the state of Oklahoma, an early pioneer in the state of Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, he, he was a smart guy. He was fluent in two languages, Spanish and French. And uh, he also learned seven different Native American dialects. So he was a smart guy, and anything he picked up, he, he, he was on top of. Um, you know, and despite all his controversy, 
that happened, um, people did love him here, and uh, they had a lot of respect for him. So if you're wanting to find him, he's really easy to find. Basically, there is an entrance right over there. It's kind of the main entrance of the cemetery, somewhere right in through there. I know the sun might be in the camera. I'm trying to angle, angle it out of it. But you're going to come in that entrance and immediately make a right. And that's on Cedar Lane. And then this is like Kennedy Lane or Kennedy Road Drive, something like that within the cemetery. But you're going to go down that road and then you can just park and walk right over to him. It's very easy to find. Basically right up front uh, to the right when you come in that main entrance. So I wanted to thank you guys for watching these videos. It means a lot to me. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, give this video a thumbs up for me. It, it takes a lot of research to do these. Uh, and also a lot of driving stuff like that to find these people. But this was an interesting guy, Temple. Um, definitely an old west guy. One of those lawmen slash outlaw type guys. Very interesting character. But thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys next time.